I'm from Örebro University, and I thought I'd not really have the perspective on talking about uh, local governments, but more on the rationale of uh, democratic innovations uh, more generally, and why we need them, uh, why we're considered to, to have these discussions and development, and also a little bit on how to make them. How do we innovate in democracy? And uh, Sweden is a good example uh, of uh, a democracy that not so long ago was considered a, a, a finalized project. It was a quite well-functioning democracy, has been considered a very well-functioning democracy. High turnout rates in elections. We have a lot of people being party members. Uh, we have a stable party system. Uh, uh, with a lot of high number of people identifying with the parties and also a, a good organized civil society. But we know that in the later years this has changed quite uh, not dramatically but over a long period of, of year this has changed in most of the Western European countries and also in Sweden. So we have a situation where turnout is falling in most Western democratic mm -hmm. countries. Uh, moreover, uh, the, the number of people that are involved in political parties are decreasing mm -hmm. uh, very rapidly. Party identification is, uh, is not as strong as it once was. So the, the situation has changed and some, some people say that the representative democracy is in crisis. That is perhaps to say a little bit too much, uh, but the party, the function of political parties in representative democracy is in change, at, at least, and is challenged in many ways. And uh, for Sweden, that is uh, more of a challenge, perhaps, than in many other countries. Uh, we all live in representative democracies, but some of them are more party-centered and some of them are more citizen-centric. And uh, this is uh, a study showing uh, some numbers from uh, a Dutch study, looking at, at the local level. And they, they uh, uh, show that uh, on, on, the, on the constitutional level and also on behavioral level, there is quite a big difference between uh, the, the Western European countries when it comes to, uh, to citizen democracy on the one hand and, and party democracy on the other hand. The, the citizen democracy indicators are more that you can directly vote for mayors and uh, you have the op opportunity to have uh, uh, referendas, uh, decisive referendas and so forth. Uh, while in the party democracy uh, it's more or less in the hands of parties how to run local government. And what you can see here is that Sweden is uh, an outstanding example of a party democracy. And the most, uh, most typical example of party democracy is in, in Europe perhaps. And on the other hand you have Switzerland where there's a lot of referenda and so forth. So in, in Sweden this is uh, clearly a challenge that the parties are, are losing, loosening their position a little bit amongst the citizens. Okay. And perhaps you can mention yeah. that Estonia is not among them. No, Estonia is not among this uh, in, in this uh, study. Uh, but I don't think that you have really the same party democracy type that we have in, in Sweden uh, as, as strong as Sweden. You come somewhere in between. Another important development is cultural change among the, the citizenry, which is uh, mentions one explanation for why we see a, tur a, a lowering turnout and a lessening party identification and so forth. This is a study from uh, uh, Ronald Inhart and his colleagues, which is running uh, surveys for uh, many years, since the uh, 1970s, on, on citizen values. And uh, there are two axes here. This is on the traditional values or secular values. And then there is uh, the other scale is what they call survival values and self-expressive values. It's a little bit complicated, but what it 
more or less says is that the more you go to the right, up, the upper right, the more indiv individualized cit citizens are becoming. And as far as it, it's the economic modernization is driving the development to us more individual citizens. And right up in the right corner, we have Sweden as actually one of the most individualized citizens when it comes to self-expression and, and so forth. And this has, has implications for how people like to engage in politics. The more, the more individual citizens also want to participate in politics in more individual, simple ways. So, uh, we have an... Uh, yeah, yeah. We have a situation which can be pictured like, uh, uh, like this graph, where the party system is still very intact, and uh, it's still the parties in, in Sweden and many other Western European countries that are uh, making the decisions and control the decision making. And the politicians ident identify very closely with the parties. And when they are up for a, a, a conflict between their own values, uh, the, their own uh, views, the, the parties' views and the citizens' views, they go for voting for the party line. And that is what uh, what the one trend here is showing, the, these dots, that on the local level, party identification among politicians has actually increased during, since the 60s to today. It's a, been a more, more a party democracy than it once was. Local democracy is known for being uh, more direct and, and less part, party politicized. But during the years, it's, it, party identification and party politics has grown stronger on the local level amongst politicians. The other line is uh, the view of citizens, showing that party identification among citizenry has been, been decreasing over the years, and quite rapidly since the 60s when there were the mass party, uh, we had the mass parties. This is a, a picture of what, what is some, sometimes called the, the cartel party, where the party is, is uh, deconnected from the citizen and, and running, uh, running the business more or less decoupled from, from citizens. And this gap between the, the parties and the, the citizens' views of uh, uh, how the decisions should be made or how we should participate in politics is pretty much what uh, uh, we are here to talk about today. There is a gap between the public and the politics on how to, to, to uh, run politics and how to participate in politics. Uh, that we need somehow to, to um, come over. And democratic innovations uh, is a quite new concept for uh, framing this debate and uh, includes all types of mechanisms for connecting people and the government in new ways. So it's about uh, all the things you will hear about today, I think, uh, is uh, new forms of participation, democratic innovations that are interesting. To deepen participation and make them directly in policy making. Yeah. And just to wrap up this up, so uh, these new forms of participation is something new for all of us. Uh, the established uh, political system ha has not worked with so much with direct participation in politics. Uh, so we need to uh, uh, try new solutions and uh, evaluate them and come up with uh, new things and learn from each other. Therefore, we. Uh, we very much need to, uh, uh, to, to to make up new collaborations also to, to come up with these uh, innovations. And our product is that kind of product uh, that we have here with uh, Estonia and Iceland and, and Sweden, where we have different partners from academia, government and civil society uh, working together to, to test new forms of participation and evaluate them and see what's 
good and bad is coming out of them. So it's a little bit of framing for, for the further debate today.